What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about an awesome application for solid tools that's going to change the way that you model in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and jump into it. And so a lot of this is based on a presentation that Matt Wheeler gave at the SketchUp Summit, um, at Mike Brightman's SketchUp Summit. And uh, so it really kind of opened my eyes to some of the things you can do with solids and also some other things, which we'll talk about in another video. But um, definitely make sure that you are following Matt Wheeler, because I think there's going to be more cool stuff coming from him in the future. Uh, he will be speaking at Basecamp as well. All right, so let's say we've got a situation in SketchUp where we've got a number of grouped objects, right? So in this situation, for example, I've got a number of different pickets in here. We'll say that I wanted this whole fence area to basically curve. So have kind of an arched look to it. Well, I could come in here and I could draw a line across, right? And draw kind of an arch. But at the moment that can be a little bit frustrating because I would have to come in here and like manually cut each one of these fence pickets like this. Now, one of the things that you might do is you might think about using the extension solid tools that's built into SketchUp. This is basically a tool set designed to help you work with different solid geometry or geometry that doesn't have anything on the interior and it has like a completely enclosed exterior. Now the problem with that right now is if I was to push pull this across, right, I've basically created a profile and I've drawn it across and I can make it a group. You can see how this is a solid group. However, at the moment, if we try to use this, right? So if I pick the subtract method and then click in here, notice how it's only going to cut across one of these objects. Now, luckily there's a cool function inside of solid tools called union. And so when we select the option for union, what this is gonna do is it's going to combine multiple solids into one object. Well, because each one of these pickets is a solid group, we can select the option for union, and it's going to make this into one solid group, right? It maintained all of the geometry on the inside. Now, one thing about that is notice that it is just now raw geometry in here. So you do lose any kind of component functionality that you might've had. However, now we've got an individual solid group right here and then a solid group right here. Well, now we can use the function subtract to come in here and remove this from this like this. So it's a very quick, efficient way to create a curving fence in here or to cut multiple different objects. Now this is gonna work in a lot of different situations. Like for example, I've got a situation now where we've got the same kind of thing, but these pickets are a lot closer together. And so again, we've got a bunch of solid groups. We're just going to use the union function in order to make them into one solid group. And then we're gonna take this profile and we'll push pull it across so that it has some thickness. Now it's a solid if I group all those edges and faces together, but now we're gonna remove or subtract this object from this object right here. So that can be extremely interesting and extremely valuable. Go ahead and get rid of this extra geometry in here like this. But this can be super valuable for more complex surfaces. So for example, notice how I've got a fence in here that I've got alternating boards, right? I've got some boards on one side of the fence supports, some boards on the other. Well, every one of these has been modeled as a solid group. And so what that means is that means that you could take this whole thing, select it, and you could do a union on it in order to make it a solid object. Well now, say that you wanted to remove some of this and create kind of a curved frame that goes inside of the fence. Well, that's really easy to do. So I'm just gonna take this object and I'm gonna go ahead and erase this interior stuff in here like this. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push pull this object through like this. Well, note that this is a solid group. And once I union this whole thing, this is a solid group. Well, what that means is that means that I can use this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take this face and do a control C. And I'm gonna do an edit, paste in place. So I've got a copy of that face in here, but now I can do a subtract and I can subtract this object from this object right here. So notice how we were able to cut this. Well, now I could offset that in a little bit. So call it an inch and a half, delete out this face and we may wanna go ahead and delete out this extra 
geometry in here. If I'd made this just a little bit bigger, then this wouldn't be a problem, but it's okay. This is just really easy to get rid of. We're just gonna select it all right here. But then we could take this object. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna double click on it, right click to make it a group. And we're going to move this over so that it aligns with this surface. Well, then we could take this push pull it like this. And now we've got kind of a frame inside of our fence. Well, from there, we wanna get even more complex. Say we wanna create kind of a lattice work that goes in our fence. Well, I've done the same thing over here where I've created a fence lattice like this. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move this over. We're gonna move this until it aligns with the middle of our face, but notice how I've got this lattice in here and I've done the same thing where I created this with a bunch of copies and then I use the union. So now this whole thing is a solid group right here. Well, then I'm going to do a cut. No, I'm gonna do a copy and then I'm gonna go ahead and delete out this face and I'm gonna go outside of this group and I'm gonna do an edit paste in place. Well, now what I can do is I can push pull this across like this. I'm just gonna triple click on it. I'm gonna make it a group. Okay, and so now we've got this all set up and ready to go. And what we wanna do is we want to use a different function. We wanna use the split function, which is basically going to use one solid to split up the geometry of another solid, right? Because what we wanna do is we want to split this lattice using this shape right here. So we're gonna activate split. We're gonna click on this group first, and then we'll click on this group second. And notice how now, if I delete this out, I've got one shape right here and one shape right here. Well, you can delete out this exterior shape like this, and you're left with a lattice inside of the hole or inside of the gap in your space. So this is extremely powerful for putting patterns inside of spaces. And so this also has some interesting applications for more complex surfaces. So I've got a surface that I created using um, extrude tools, and then I just use joint push pull in order to push pull it so it has some thickness, but this is basically a solid group. Well, in this case, I'm gonna take some objects, and first I'm going to do the union. So I'm gonna do union right here, but then we'll do the subtract functionality. So we're gonna pick the subtract right here. We'll pick group one and then group two. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna go through and that's going to cut and remove material from this object right here. So this has really interesting applications for creating these more organic shapes or for creating a sliced structure like this one. So again, we can do the same thing. We're just gonna pick these up. We're gonna do a union right here and then we'll do a subtract from this object. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna basically leave us with a sliced object in 3D, just like this. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you're using solids like this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, I will link to my course on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.